Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for our meditation today comes from our Old Testament reading of Ezekiel chapter 33. It was read a few moments ago from the lectern, Dear Friends in Christ. You know, oftentimes when we want to emphasize the effectiveness of something, we like to say it has teeth to it. Try to cut a steak with a butter knife, and it just doesn't work very well. You'll experience frustration because that butter knife doesn't have teeth to it. If you have false teeth, try taking them out and eating corn on the cob. It just doesn't work too well. Civil laws are thought to work better today if they have teeth to them. Some people may drive excessive over the speed limit, knowing that if they get caught, the, they'll receive only a minimal fine. But if the law has teeth to it and the fine is considerable, they may think twice about having a lead foot. Ezekiel was called by God to be a watchman for the children of Israel. He went into exile with the first wave of those who were taken captive. Many false prophets there were predicting a short stay in Babylon. But Ezekiel said differently. He warned them to repent for their stay would be long. Ezekiel was called by God then to remind the people of God that because of their unrepentant sin, they would endure a very lengthy exile. In the previous eight chapters before our text here in chapter 33, Ezekiel prophesies against the various nations out there. But at the beginning then of chapter 33, he turns his attention then to the children of Israel. With only slight variations, the words from Ezekiel 33, verse 7 through 9, duplicate chapter 3, verses 17 through 19. As God's spokesman then, Ezekiel became a watchman. You see, in Old Testament times, a watchman would stand on the highest point of the city wall and by blowing a trumpet would make various announcements. He could warn the people of approaching danger, he could tell the people of an incoming messenger with a message, or he could tell them the progress of a battle that was taking place. He wasn't a watchman for the city, though. Ezekiel was a watchman for the church. The task that God gives him in our reading is to confront the wicked and the sinner. Ezekiel was to warn God's people of their sin. God says, if you do not speak out to dissuade him from his ways, the wicked man will die for his sin, and I will hold you accountable for his blood. In no uncertain terms then, God says that sin is deadly serious. It's a very serious matter. Serious enough to put someone to death in this life and in the life to come. In other words, it has teeth to it. God's word has teeth. Since God appointed Ezekiel to confront the sinfulness of ancient Judah, he needed to do that hard thing. He needed to confront sin. He would be held responsible if the wayward Israelites were not addressed and he did not confront their sin. If he warned the wayward Israelites and his warning was ignored by them, he could know for sure that he was faithful to his task, even if that message fell on the deaf ears of the people. Sin is very serious business. It's business for the ministers God called to confront sin, and it's hard for them to do. This warning was to be issued not as some kind of bothersome thing or disruption of the people's lives of Israel, but so that they would repent of their sin and then experience the new life that only God could give to them. Ezekiel's message of repentance and faith, law and gospel, was not to be taken lightly. Sin is very serious. God's word is effective. God's word has teeth to it. God's word has teeth to work repentance in us, his law. The law has teeth. When God, through his watchman, warns us of our sin, it's a very serious matter then. It leads certainly to eternal death for the soul whose sins shall die. Our good works, our self-righteousness can never, ever save us. I don't know of a single pastor out there who thinks that church discipline is the most exciting part of ministry and the most fun thing to do. I don't believe I've ever met a church elder who jumps at the chance to confront inactive members who have strayed away from word and sacrament. 
contrary to the old stereotypes that are out there, faithful ministers in God's church are not out there to control people's lives or to flex their egos or to impose their agenda on the people. Pastors confront sin because God has called them to confront sin. Christians confront sin because in the gospel for today, Jesus calls you to confront sin and he even mapped out a very specific approach for you to follow when someone shows no repentance. We don't like the teeth of God's law. Oftentimes we feel it's unjust. Sometimes we think God's evaluation of our situation is just way, way too harsh. Surely there is goodness in us. You can ask anyone out there on the street, oftentimes they'll tell you, just as the house of Israel thought, God's word was too harsh. God's word has teeth to cut us. People out there, when you ask them, they'll tell you they're basically great people. They'll tell you they've been pretty good, that they are actually better than other people out there. They'll tell you, some of them will, they even keep the Ten Commandments. God assures us that it is his nature to be just, and so he will judge us accordingly. God's word has the bite of the law. When God's law has done its work, there's absolutely no need to despair like the people of Israel thought they would. God's word also has teeth that cut the other way. They cut the opposite way of the law. They cut for our salvation. Can we call these teeth then? I really think we can. God's word also has teeth to work faith unto salvation, his gospel message. When God's law has convicted us of our sin, we turn to him in repentance and faith, asking along with the Israelites then, how then can we live? God makes this promise with an oath, with teeth you might say in our text, as I live, declares the Lord. God takes absolutely no pleasure in the death of the wicked person. His reason for using the law is to have us to turn from our sin. In other words, to repent, get forgiveness, and to live. Jesus just didn't talk to us about his love. He put teeth into it, if you will. He acted in love by going the way of the suffering and death on that cross, walking to Calvary on that road and be hanging on that tree for us. On Calvary, Jesus suffered that just wrath of God's punishment, the ultimate in punishment, in fact, punishment with teeth as he died on the cross, not for anything that he had done wrong. But he died on that cross for your sin and for my sin, for the sins of the whole world. And as Jesus shed his innocent blood on the cross, justice was served, as atonement for sin was once made for all people. Jesus' death has teeth, as we see in the curtain in the temple being torn in two at the moment he died. His resurrection had teeth as no stone blocking the entrance to that tomb. Not even death itself could hold him back from rising from the dead. Through his means of grace, God works repentance and faith in everyday life. God goes to the heart of the matter then by transplanting our dead heart with sin, killed by the law, with a transformed heart, cleaned by the gospel. Our faith is strengthened through a life of repentance as we daily drown our old sinful nature by remembering our baptism. Our sanctified life is uplifted each time our teeth literally touch Christ's body and blood in, with, and under the bread and wine for the assurance of forgiveness and holy communion. God's word has the teeth of the nails of the gospel in it. Thanks be to God. He is merciful. He is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. He patiently gives each and every one of us time to repent. That's why God told Ezekiel, say to them, as I live, declares the Lord, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. That's why Jesus said to his heavenly father, sir, let it alone for this year. In our gospel reading in that fig tree, leave it alone, sir, for one more year, and I'll dig around it, and I'll put manure on it, I'll fertilize it, and we'll see what happens. 
God is giving us more time. He's giving us another year to repent and graciously be nourished through his word and sacraments. To repent is to turn around. It's to make a whole different lifestyle change. It's to make a 180 degree turnaround in our lives. It's about turning to a totally different direction than what we've been caught in. Where do we turn to? Well, we turn to God in faith. God says to us, I have sent you a watchman to show you your sin. And when the law has done its work within you, you need not despair for, he says, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their way and live. And through my crucified and resurrected son, you will have new life. With teeth in it, now you have new life. And for all eternity, by grace through faith, when my law has done its work, you don't need to despair. My crucified and resurrected son has new life for you with teeth in it. God's word has teeth. The bite of the law has teeth. And the gospel has the teeth of the nails in it. No doubt, God's word has teeth to it. You are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And may you always remember, the teeth of the law does bite and sting. But the teeth of the gospel is always there with forgiveness of sins as we repent and always turn back to him. Amen.